I have to remember not to bang the sensors. This is how buddy hops. <laughs> oh, brilliant. OK, I'd forgotten just how. Oh, no. Well, believe it or not, this project was originally going to start out as a bed for Shark Hotel at Thorpe Park. We were going to make people dream of roller coasters. If you're a roller coaster fanatic, that's what you'd want, right? But it's when we started to get into the real science behind this that we really got inspired by what we're building here. And the question is, well, why replicate a roller coaster? Roller coasters are great. Well, actually, we're developing this into a motion simulator for wheelchair access. So imagine if you go to a theme park with somebody who's got wheelchair access needs, the person with wheelchair access will go on the motion simulator, the family will go on the big roller coaster, everybody will have the same experience and leave the park being able to discuss the same thing. So it's all about accessibility, all about inclusion. So that's the work we're doing here, but that's only just the start of it. We've got our motion simulators, and the key thing about these is they're Stuart platforms. They're six degree of motion simulators. We've got a fantastic control system. So the rides are being made in a program called No Limit. You can make your own roller coaster, and then we take telemetry data out of the gaming engine and we put it into a control system. So we can control when you're banking left and right on this ride, we can replicate the forces by closely modeling them using these robotic systems, these pneumatic cylinders. I've been on it, I love it. Just don't turn the intensity up to 10. <laughs> I'm really interested in the interplay between what people see going into their eyes and their sensations of movement. The motion simulator, even though it's only be moving a small amount, it's just enough to fool my brain. Because we've got the visuals going into my eyes at the same time, I only need to drop maybe a few inches and I'm feeling those physical forces which my brain immediately interprets to be something which is realistic and a facsimile of the real ride. Now, if I'm able to create a real ride simulation that's giving me exactly the same levels of thrill, imagine then if I start to create even further virtual drops or more extreme loop-the-loops, loop-the-loops that go up miles into the air. I mean, we can do all this with a simulator. So the limitations are only the capacities of our own minds to imagine these things. We're conducting psychometric profiling tests to, so we know the kind of riders you are going on here. We're also doing psychophysiological monitoring. So we're monitoring galvanic skin response. That's monitoring sensors across two fingers, gathering heart rate data. And we're going to compare people's experiences of a simulated ride to the real ride. We're hoping to find, we're hoping to find that the responses that somebody feels on a ride like this are going to be exactly the same as the ones that if she went on the real ride, she'd be screaming exactly the same way. So if we manage to validate that our simulator is exactly the same as a real ride, we know that we've got a winner. And the more we understand about how we can create these visual illusions and psychological tricks, the greater the value of thrilling experiences we can create.